Okay, so still within technical setup, we're going to now cover updating, validating, and deploying the schema code. <clears throat> now, if you recall, this was one of the files that was automatically generated when the customer is onboarded and completed their type form. Uh, now, remember, it was a partial uh, completion of the file because we have some placeholder information in there. So let me pull that up. All right, so here is the folder. And if you recall, this is the, the schema code nap file, which was automatically created with uh, the Zapier uh, zap that we created. And here is the file itself. So we've already verified the information in here uh, to be accurate. And you can see we have some things still uh, that are placeholders. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Um, so before I do that, let me actually pull up the... Um, see here okay so here is the ClickUp checklist so this is updating validating and deploying the schema code right so if we open this up we have our subtasks to keep us on track and just some uh, reference links here as well so first thing we're gonna look at add additional branded profiles if we have any additional branded profiles and that's related to a uh, another another task entirely to create branded profiles, we would then add them into this file. So you can see right now we have our Facebook and Instagram, which was, uh, these were added by the, the client when they submitted their form. If we had other ones here that the client didn't think to add, or um, we have some branded profiles that we created on our end, we would add them here. And that's as simple as just kind of highlighting uh, one of the, the lines here. So just highlight that, copy it, I hit enter, and then paste that in. And if you're as OCD as I am, we can just kind of fix the formatting. And then you just overwrite that URL. And let's say this was a uh, Yelp page. So this could be their Yelp listing, right? Um, in this case, we're just going to stick with the Facebook and Instagram since uh, that's currently what the client wants to use. Uh, we don't have any other branded profiles for this particular client under this pricing package that they paid for. Um, but if you did, that's how you would add them. And I have, uh, if you click on add additional branded profiles, I added some references here of the profiles that I would add uh, if they if you had them. So Facebook and Instagram, whoops. Uh, Twitter is good if you have it. We have Yelp, YouTube channel, and Pinterest. Those are the ones I would really stick with. If, if you wanna add more, you can, but I find that you want to uh, pretty much stick to the big ones on this. All right, so once you're satisfied with that, let me just go back. Uh, we'll go ahead and just click that this is complete. So I'll close it. All right, uh, close this task. All right, the next thing we wanna do is add hours of operation. All right, and I have a link here as a reference uh, for this. So let me go ahead and open that up. And what we want to do is just scroll down here because I like the way they have this set up for hours of operation. Now, what we want to do is reference the client info sheet. Um, so I can actually uh, back out of this and just reference that real quick. So we've got the client info sheet and I've got the hours of operation here at the bottom. So we've got and I'm just going to highlight this and save it for reference in another uh, window, my other monitor. All right, so let me close this out and go back to this. All right, so we're adding the hours operation. So I've got, and I'll just bring this over so you can see we have Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right, so we got Monday, 7 a.m., and this is in 24 hour clock, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And they're all seven. To, what did I say? Uh, 1700. Oops. Okay, and then we have Saturday. Uh, Saturday is 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
So we have Saturday, and that's 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., which is 1500, okay? And then Sunday is closed, so I will not select Sunday. Um, and that's all I need uh, to generate that. And it should generate live here, so you can see we've got the opening hours right here. So all I want to do, if I pull up the the placeholder here for hours of operation, uh, let's see. So we have opening hours right down here. All right, so we've got it in quotes, opening hours. So I just want to go back and we can just select opening hours as well. We just have to make sure that that's what we overwrite. So I'm just gonna copy it right there and come back over. And all I'm going to do is just make sure right to the end of the quote. So I'm just going to select this line. It's got some extra spaces in it. So I'm just going to paste over that. And that should be good. Um, we do validate this at the end. So if there's any anything that just you just don't see, it's glaring. You may need a comma after it. Like sometimes that's usually what you need. Um, so let's take it out for now just to show you when we validate if it actually uh, validates or not because it's an easy way to, uh, to just fix that. But we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then Sunday there's nothing, so it's closed. All right, so that is good. Let me go back. And we are done with this one. Uh, let me just check something here. I'm just curious, is there? Okay. So we're done with this tab. Let's go back over here. So we've updated the hours of operation. That's good. Uh, let's open, close, done. All right, now we want to add the logo and the image. So if we go back over to that file, we can see that we have logo, placeholder, right? Image, placeholder, uh, placeholder. Uh, so let's go to the website for this client. And we are going to just right click on their logo and copy image address. Go back over to this file. And then from where I have the brackets for placeholder, I'm just gonna highlight that whole thing. So anything between the quotes, we wanna keep the quotes and then paste. And you can see we pasted in the URL direct to that logo image. It's going to end in an image file. So in this case, .png, Yours could be, you know, .jpg or even GIF, right? Um, the important thing is to just know that it's a direct image URL. All right, next we want to just grab a regular image off of the website. So I'm gonna just highlight this because we're just gonna overwrite it. Oops, not the quotes though, everything between the quotes. And then I'm gonna go back over to the website and we can grab any image on this page that we want. It's just to, uh, add a little bit more into the schema file so I could take this image or I'm probably just gonna take this one right here. So in order to do that, we just right click again, copy image address, and then I'll go back over and right click and paste. And again, see in this case, it's a .jpg. All right, now for the description. Actually, let me go back. We just kinda, kinda follow along with our ClickUp guide. All right, so we added the logo and the image, done. All right, now we are on to the, the uh, description. In order to find the description, we should have already completed this with our, uh, our on-page optimization of title, uh, description, other meta information, tags, and that sort of thing. If you just wanna quickly retrieve it, you can just right-click on your website, click, or excuse me, on the client's website, and then view page source. And this is using the Chrome browser, I find it easy to use. Now you can look for meta description. Um, so here it is right here, meta name description. If you just do a control F and then just do DESC or, you know, just search for description and then we'll find it. And then it's the content aspect of it that we want. So the content is this right here. So I'm going to highlight this, everything up until the quote mark, copy it. I can close it, I'm done with it now. Go back over here, and then we're going to highlight everything between the quotes again, get rid of that placeholder, 
and paste in that description. So you can see Color Bright Painting is a full service painting company serving the Long Island, New York area. We offer one hour response time and fast service. Okay. Uh, we've already vetted this information so we know that the address is correct that we want. Uh, now we need to do the geo coordinates. We have the address, so now we need the coordinates. Um, first, let me go back over to ClickUp and let's mark this as complete. All right, uh, so we got dependencies here, so uh, close that. That just means that we needed to have other information before we could uh, uh, complete that information. All right, so now we have latitude and longitude. And I've put in this URL here to quickly get that. So if we click on latitude and longitude, it's going to ask us to enter the address right here. All right, so what I'll do is uh, just pull up that file and I'm just gonna start copying and pasting. So we've got that, Greenlaw, New York. All right, and I'm just gonna copy the uh, zip code. All right, so we've got Green Lawn, New York, and then the zip, and then I'll click go. And we can see that, mark this right here in Long Island, and the latitude is right here. So I'm going to highlight that, copy it, go back over to the file, and then for latitude, again, just get rid of the placeholder. And let's go ahead and paste the latitude in and go back. And we're going to do the same thing for longitude, copy that, come back over here, highlight this, and paste in longitude. All right, back over to ClickUp, just kind of following along here, we finish that. All right, now we need to add the map URL. And you can see this is what I was talking about earlier with the dependency. So the dependency here is that we have set up our Google My Business, right? So this is waiting on Google My Business creation. Uh, in this case, we've already created it for this client. So let me go back here and I will pull up the Google My Business for the client. Let's see. If I can find it. Uh... Okay, so here is the Google My Business uh, section for this client. Here's color bright painting. I'll click on the client and the easiest way is just click view on maps. You can do this by just searching in Google if you wanted directly as a user would. Uh, but this is an easy way since you already have access to Google My Business and then you know for sure you're getting the exact URL. So after I clicked on that, you can see we've got this URL up here. I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to come back over into our file. Get rid of placeholder and paste in this Google Maps URL. All right, let's go back over to ClickUp. All right, so we added the map URL. That's good. Close that. And we want to validate the file now in Google. So here is a link to validate the schema. I'll close out the latitude and longitude. Don't need that anymore. All right, so what we're gonna do is put in a code snippet. And I'm just gonna come back over here and let me just save this, just control S, since we've been working on it, don't wanna lose our work. Now let's select all and copy and go back over here and I'm just gonna paste that in. We're gonna run a test and see if it validates. All right, so we have an error. All right, so this is good. We have uh, a syntax error value object or array uh, expected. So that looks to be uh, let's see, on this line. Uh, okay, so I think I see what it was, and I've done this enough times. Um, so basically this bracket here, and it tells you where the error is, right? So we've got, kind of gives you an idea. So I've got to, I'm going to hit delete and back this up to over here and get rid of that comma. Uh, because the bracket should be, it should be quote, bracket, comma. Uh, I believe that is correct. So let's actually just go ahead and click this again and validate it and see if that works. And there, uh, wait, let me see. Oh, we got another error. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, and actually I believe this is related to what we 
thought earlier with this comma, so I gotta put that comma after after that section there. And let's try to validate again. And now we have validated, okay. So sometimes that happens, um, just have to, that's why we validate the code first to make sure everything is good. So you can see now we have zero errors and zero warnings. We have everything looking perfect. Um, and now since this is the, the accurate code, I'm just going to select it all one more time, copy it, and then let's go ahead over to our file and I'm just going to paste it here and uh, you can see this is the correct code. So now what I'm going to do is just control S and save it. And let's just validate it one last time. I always like to make double sure that this is right. So I'm just gonna delete everything and then paste and then validate. And yep, we are good to go on the schema code. So let's go back over to ClickUp. And so we ensured that it validates in Google. So I'll go ahead and mark that closed. All right, and then what I'm going to do is go back over to the client site and let's go into the back end here. And we, we have that plugin, insert headers and footers, where we've been putting scripts. And let's just go over to settings, insert headers and footers. And then I'm going to grab this code. So I'm just gonna copy it. And over here in the header section, and I've sterilized it just to show just this code for now, but uh, we have our other scripts in here normally. All right, so this is where I would paste the schema code that we just created, and I'm gonna put that in the header of the site. Go ahead and click Save. And if you wanted to validate that it's appearing, you could just go to the main website now, and we can view the source code once again. And we can just do a Control F and look for schema. And you can see now we have the file that we just pasted and here's all the information. And Google reads this and it builds, uh, essentially we're giving Google instructions, uh, explicit instructions for what this uh, website is all about, connecting it to the Google My Business and uh, just building that relevancy. All right, uh, and then finally, let's go ahead and mark that as completed. And we are now finished with our schema code. Uh, updating, validation, and deploying to the actual website. All right, I will see you in the next video.